welcome to another edition of Radio OPAC, a weekly conversation series that has been occurring Wednesdays at noon Eastern Time over Facebook Live on the Ohio Prison Arts Connection Facebook page. A special welcome goes out to everyone in our audience today who are seeing this over social media or via a recorded digital or DVD copy after the fact. It's great to have you all here today. My name is Jared Small, and I am on the steering committee of the Ohio Prison Arts Connection, or OPAC for short. And OPAC is a group of stakeholders whose mission is to connect the arts to those who are just as involved. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. And I am very excited to be here in conversation today with a special group of folks. Um, uh, there, I've been looking forward to this for quite a while, but these folks you see here uh, are staff members with the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction, who have been some of OPAC's biggest supporters since OPAC's inception uh, back in the earlier part of 2017. So uh, these ODRC staff members come from different backgrounds, do different things, but one thing is, is certain, it holds true, uh, is their conviction of the power of the arts uh, in its ability to connect with people and to help folks grow. So, like I said, I'm very excited to be here today in conversation. Um, and I will uh, mention one thing off the bat, that we've got two folks you'll see on your screen right now. We're gonna have another person join us. Uh, we'll stitch them in. So if you see a little bit of uh, back and forth between the screens, don't worry. Nothing on your end, but we'll do a little bit of camera magic on our end to make it happen. But uh, with that, I want to, uh, instead of me introducing others, which has been kind of the standard fare in Radio OPAC, I want to have our guests maybe introduce themselves and, and tell us who they are, maybe what you do, uh, and, and uh, just maybe a little bit of background about ourselves. Not too much, of course. We've got a couple of questions to get to, but um, maybe maybe we'll start. Charlesy, how about you go ahead? So I'm Charlsey Banks. I am an activity therapist with the department. I have been with the department for about five years. Uh, I work at Dayton Correctional Institution, which, which is a women's facility in Dayton, Ohio. Um, I'm originally from Kentucky, so um, I was really happy to be able to be a part of seeing the, hear the differences and incorporate them into my program. Thanks, Charlsey. Mr. Gardenhire, how about you? How you doing, everyone? My name is Eric Gardenhire. I am the activity therapist administrator here at Grafton Correctional Institution, also like slash reg director. Um, I've been with the department for 30 years uh, at Grafton, and I went to Trumbull, and now I'm back at Grafton. And um, I mean, art, I have a background in art. I attended Cuyahoga uh, Community College, uh, graphic design, commercial art. I was just blessed to be able to incorporate that in uh, what I do here for the men. And art is very powerful. Thanks for that, Eric. Yeah, indeed. Both of you have a really rich background in the arts yourselves. And I know your day-to-day -day also involves the arts. So it's, it's great to have both of you here with us uh, on, on video. And we ha have one more uh, person we'd like to introduce to you. It's Miss Pam Brady. So. Pam, can you go ahead and introduce yourself, please, to the to the audience? Hi, um, thanks, Jared. My name is um, Pam Brady. I am the former activity therapy administrator um, from Pickaway Correctional Institution. I worked for the Department of Corrections for 34 years. I um, started out at Marysville. Um, I moved to Franklin pre-release. I worked at the Correctional Reception Center, and I. Um, end up my career at um, the Pickaway Correctional Institution. That's great, thanks Pam. And so with that, we've got Charlesy, Eric and Pam, some of uh, some really all, of course, all three wonderful artists in their own right, but really wonderful people in general. Again, thanks for joining us. And I wanna jump right in uh, and maybe Eric, you kind of touched on it already a little earlier, but um, I'm wondering if each of you can tell me why the arts are important to you. What, maybe if you had a, a formative experience with the arts in your life, just a little bit of reflection. What do the arts mean to you um, as a person in your position? 
whatever way you want to take that. Maybe Charles, maybe we can start with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so the arts are important to me because it's an expression and a feeling, um, and it has so many healing properties. A lot of the um, incarcerated population that we work with have a lot of trauma history. And because art's a unique language and it's spoken without words, um, it's very important to them and to the art process. Um, they get to get that those emotions, those feelings out on their canvas or whatever art form they're working on. Um, there's very few things in life that have the ability to um, do what art can actually do. So um, it's like a catalyst for change and growth and it can inspire, inspire, it can help someone evolve, transform their, their lives actually. So. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah. A catalyst for growth indeed. Eric, I guess same question to you. Why are the arts important to you in your position or in, or in your life? Um, you know, I uh, agree with what Charlie said. Uh, you know, I've seen where men have transitioned from uh, coming into uh, the institutions, not having any artistic ability or any ability to play an instrument and having these vehicles provided for them, not only does it help them, but it also changes. It changes the mindset. It changes the atmosphere. And it makes, it's a, it's a great, I think it's, it's a great gift that we can give to our fellow man. Uh, be it performing concerts, be it uh, writing stories, be it poetry, visual arts. I mean, it covers such a broad scope, but you, you see the healing uh, factors that it has when uh, individuals get involved in it. And it also links us at, with the community as well. Um, it it's just has so much upside. It's a win-win for both um, individuals and all parties that partake in. The arts are a win-win. You're right. I like I like the sound of that, and uh, it's all about humanity, right? And and uh, absolutely growing, certainly, and the community, of course, as you mentioned, which is uh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Arts are about community as well. Uh, so, Pam, we want to get your take on this. Pam, why are the arts important to you? Sure. Um, it is important for me to give others an opportunity to um, experience the arts and to uh, take um, take the offenders away from their everyday routines. Um, I, as part of a, a of a music concert, a theater production, or an art exhibit, it allows their minds to see and experience new things. Um, it gives them the opportunity to give back to the community. Um, it also exposes them to new things that they've never experienced before. Thanks, Pam. And, and now I want to go uh, to maybe a, a bit of a different topic and to, to ask about your institution specifically. And I'm wondering if, if you could tell me some of the artistic practices uh, of the residents inside your institution. For, you know, what kind of arts do they do? How do they do it? Um, maybe could you walk us through a day in, in what your recreation center looks like? Now, maybe stick with the first part though first. Give us like a really quick overview of what do the arts look like in your, in your institutions? What do you see on a day-to-day -day basis? And any of you could feel free to jump in as you wish. Chelsea, you want me to go or you want to go? You can go. Okay. Um, at Grafton, basically, you know, um, we have music is a very big part, okay? It's always been a very, very big part of uh, just an outlet. Uh, we have anywhere from 13 to 15 music groups that covers all sorts of different genres, from gospel to country uh, to rap, uh, all age groups. And it's, and it's getting the men involved. We also... Uh, help encourage with a, a loaner program. Some individuals are not fortunate to uh, have their own instruments, so we provide an instrument for them. We provide the space for them. Uh, the same thing with uh, the writing. I mean, we have partnerships with Oberlin, uh, 
Uh, Oberlin College, we have partnerships with uh, Baldwin Wallace and Drama. We have uh, uh, Oberlin Choir, OMAG, okay? Uh, that's a 32-man choir where uh, Professor Jody Kirshner comes in and instructs the man on vocal training and have actually put that music together where one voice and 32 voices become one instrument. And that's that, that's that working together piece that's very important because art is a community. Uh, same thing with Poetic Companions. Uh, we have a, a professor that comes from Kent State and he works with the men in those areas. Uh, it's it's just, it's just a great thing. I mean, it's, I, I mean, it's hard. I, I love art and I love what it does for the men. So I kind of get, you know, a little, you know, touch when we talk about it, but it's, it's very, very important in the visual arts. I mean, that's such a broad, a broad scope. We have like uh, over a hundred men involved in visual art and crafts. Okay, the creative arts program consists of the men being able to uh, work, work on, uh, work in their area. It gives them that solitude, but they're able to share what they create with everybody, either in the institution or individuals in the community. Uh, that's, uh, I think, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I don't know if I went too long, but no, that was well said, of course. A, a, a rich array of programming happening at Grafton, certainly. You mentioned Oberlin, a couple others at Kent State. Absolutely um, phenomenal programs on their own right. So thanks for mentioning those, Eric. Uh, and Charles, same goes to you. What kinds of art do you see happening inside your institution? What does the Recreation Center look like on a day-to-day -day basis from your perspective? So we have, we have a lot of visual artists, um, a lot of visual art throughout our campus. Like there's not a lot of area that we haven't touched in some way. Like if you go to our courtyard, there's huge splash of flowers, um, even in the gym, in the units. Like we try to show that this compound is um, ran by artists. We like to be very visual to bring the mood up. Our classes, we have a lot of classes. So it's like a teaching program. We have the fundamentals of art. Um, we have intermediate and then we have advanced artist classes. So if you um, actually come to our institution, you have the ability to learn art. Um, we also have dance. We have a lot of that that goes on. We have poetry, poetry slams. We have a lot of competitions. We even have rap battles. Like, so we have a lot always going on. We incorporate the arts into almost all of our programming, whether it's recovery services, um, absolutely into our, our uh, religious services, like arts encompassed and embraced by all of our programming. Wonderful, thank you. And Pam, from your time at Pickaway Correctional, is there anything you'd like to say about what you saw when it came to the arts inside the institution? Absolutely. Um, just like in the uh, outside community, um, the offenders are permitted to uh, purchase supplies to create their own art and or crafts projects. Um, they are permitted to work with many different medias, um, pen and ink, watercolors, oil painting, acrylic painting, mixed media, wood crafts, um, crocheting and uh, knitting projects. Um, and how, um, how they do it, uh, with the many opportunities that the arts provided by the recreation departments and the recreation administrators within the facilities, the recreation departments offer uh, structured classes in, uh, for the art programs and for the music programs. So uh, the um, offenders have a wide variety of, um, of uh, different arts that are offered to them. A day in recreation basically looks like three to 400 inmates a day coming into the gym, um, you know, to participate in recreation. For the uh, music program, we have like eight different bands that um, practice, you know, every day. They are allowed to uh, do concerts for the, um, the compound. Um, we have um, art classes that um, I would teach um, and um, have outside artists that I would um, 
I would get to come in to teach oil painting or to teach watercolors, but it's a whole, uh, whole process of what, you know, we do as recreation directors. Thank you, Pam, appreciate that. So for everyone here, is, has there been a, a, an impactful moment for you when you worked with an artist at your institution? Or had, was there a seminal experience that, that had, had hit you or occurred to you? Were you ever surprised or impressed or motivated by, by some artistic activity happening? I, I guess you could, you could rephrase the question, what has been the most impactful for you? during your position working in and through the arts? Is there a moment, is there an experience, is there a certain class perhaps um, that you've reflected on yourself that you've really taken to heart? Has there been a really seminal impactful experience for you? And if so, what does that look like? Well, you know what, Jared, I think again, um, just the impact of art, I'll, I'll just tell you a brief story. It was a, uh, a man here that uh, had lost connection with his family when he when he became incarcerated. He was his son was a, 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 a child, but as he got older, he had no communication. Well, he started painting and sending paintings home, and his son seen his work, and that sparked up the dialogue, and they got back connected. And that was that was important. I mean, if maybe if he never would have sent the, those pieces home, and he never would have seen them they probably never would have reconnected. And I think that just goes to show you the power of the art. I mean, it, it sparks those conversations and it, and it somewhat mends those relationships that have been damaged. Um, I think that's important. And that that's what really uh, move, continues to move me forward, okay? I see how it does do a job in repairing uh, damaged relationships. That's great, thanks, Eric. And Charles, the same to you, a, a seminal moment, impactful and ever inspired by a story or, or what you've seen? There are so many stories, like, especially like with the artist coming to find themselves and realizing that they are an artist and there's a value to their work. Um, one particular that comes to mind, there was a lady who was... Um, she never called herself an artist, but she was interested. She like hung around the program. She wanted to see more and she liked to try to interpret the art. Um, she had a lot of like things going on and you could tell there was like a, a lot of compacted trauma. So she had all of like, she was displaying a lot of behavioral issues. She was like isolation, suicidal thoughts. She had all of that. So um, I sit down with her one-on-one -on -one and I talk to her and we were kind of talking things out. And I was like, why don't you put that on paper? And she was like, you know, I really can't write. And I explained, you don't have to. Like art is a form of expression, like get it out, like get it out of your soul. It doesn't matter what it looks like, just get it out. She started sketching and at first, it really didn't have form and she started crying and she started like really expressing herself. And by the end of about an hour with her, she actually had created to me an absolute masterpiece that hangs in my office. Um, but it opened her up to where she could it like tore down those barriers where she could start talking about it. And even when she feels like she can't express that the pain and she doesn't want to, you know, open up or she doesn't want to talk about it like she can even put that line to paper and to her it came out it's an expression it's an outlet so to me that was like an amazing moment that I will probably carry with me for the rest of my life and I will say because she has allowed um, art to come into her life she actually is like a really awesome artist that works and helps teach the other ladies. And she hasn't had any behavioral issues at all. And actually her security levels have dropped. So she's like my success story. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. We'll, we'll touch on um, more of those artists that you work with in just a moment. I wanna make sure I, I ask Pam Braddy the same question, Miss Braddy. Has there been an impactful moment for you or a seminal moment where you were surprised or impressed? Have you ever been motivated by, by an artist you've worked with inside of the Pickle Correctional Institution? Um, yes, um, allowing the arts to provide a sense of normacy 
um, to their prison experience by uh, bringing in the guest artists, um, bringing in uh, cultural, doing pro cultural programs or the uh, allowing them to have different art experiences. Um, what has surprised me is seeing their ability to learn new skills um, where they would be able to just, you know, once they learn it, to just run with it. Uh, just during class when they would just ask, you know, can you show me how to do that? And it's almost like they they uh, think like, oh, well, can Ms. Braddy really draw? Or, you know, can can this guest artist really paint? And then once they see that you can, and then they're just like, oh, wow, thank you so much. And then they get it. And um, it's just, you know, allowing like a light to come on. Like they have this aha moment to where a light comes on and um, uh, they can um, just, just run with just, you know, developing their talent. And, uh, and I feel it also provides a, a foundation for them to build on once, you know, um, they've been in, in the class to see, you know, this is what I can do. And um, the last question is uh, what motivates me? What motivates me is that, you know, I really uh, felt like that was my calling to be, um, you know, to, to be in corrections and to um, share my talent with the guys or the women and to bring in artists uh, for the likes of Christian House or classical concert, um, people that would come in. And you could see on the faces of the guys, like how they were just in awe of, of other people giving back to them. So that really motivated me was, you know, just my passion for my work and passion for giving back to them and teaching them. Thank you, Pam, so much for that. So I want to take a quick pause here and just uh, take a step back and say, if anyone is just joining us on the live stream here over social media, I want you to know that uh, my name is Jared Small, and I am with the Ohio Prison Arts Connection here for this Radio OPAC segment. And today we are with staff members from the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction, or ODRC. We've got two folks live here and one person, Ms. Pam Brady, who uh, you'll see her coming in and out during the conversation. So not to worry if it looks uh, a little bit stitched together, but we're gonna keep the conversation going here. So I've got just a couple more questions uh, for you all. And I mentioned that it's gonna focus a bit more about the artist and the artistry happening. What do you think the artists that you work with would want people outside of the prison to know about their work as artists. So I'll say that again. What do you think that the artists inside would want folks to know on the outside about their work as an artist? And anyone can jump in on this one too. Hmm. Well, you know, I think that the arts sparks social change. It, uh, it, I think it it would bring uh, to see maybe them as an artist and not as an, an incarcerated artist. Uh, let the work basically uh, maybe speak for itself. Okay. Um, I think those are some, I mean, it could be uh, many more. I mean, just to kind of get, again, get their feelings and, and being, um, being very, expressive i mean you see that a lot with the with the music and especially with the the men that do the spoken word um i i think that's it just to be acknowledged as an artist i think that's i think that's really important in in, in having that in the forefront yeah artistic acknowledgement i think is what everyone all artists strive for really well said eric thanks Charlie, what are your thoughts on that? Artists on the inside, what would they want others to know? So I've had this conversation with several several of my artists, um, and it's basically in line with what Eric just said. They want a seat at the table. They don't. They don't want to be defined by their crime. They want to be seen as like a person, an artist, and let their artwork speak for itself. Um, a lot of times, they're um, reluctant to push their, their art forward because they're afraid of how they're going to be received by the public. 
um, we have a lot of amazing, amazing artists. Um, had they had different choices or decisions in life, they would be out there. Like their artwork would be headliners. I'm not kidding. They're amazing. So I think that just um, let them have a seat at the table and to be seen as an artist. Uh -huh. That's great. Thank you. And Pam, what are your thoughts from your experience? What, what do artists inside want uh, others to know about them as an artist? I think that they would want them to know uh, that they are very thankful for the opportunities that are provided by the recreation departments within the uh, Department of Corrections at all the different facilities. And they will want them to know that they're thankful for the outside groups that come in um, to make a difference in their lives. Um, I just know, you know, in my uh, career, I uh, graduated from Ohio State with a degree in art education. and. Um, that was always my goal uh, to be an advocate for the arts in corrections and to bring in the artist workshops or programs to enhance the experience of the offenders. And um, I know that they, uh, that they uh, feel like they found their talent because a lot of them don't know they have a talent and they come into the um, corrections and you know they were so busy out in their lives doing all these other things, but they don't know they have a talent until they're exposed to the art. And once they're exposed, you know, that's when they can, um, you know, really develop their talent. That's great, thank you. I wanna maybe take one more step back. We're going a bit macro now, everyone. And uh, I mentioned from the top of this conversation that um, all of you have been involved uh, quite intimately with the Ohio Prison Arts Connection since its beginning. Uh, and so, I, 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 know, I think we all have kind of ourselves very blessed and lucky to be able to have such a strong partnership with you all, certainly with ODRC, but of course with you as artists and staff members of, of the agency um, has really meant a lot uh, to the OPAC. Uh, its existence, its reason for existence um, can't be understated, uh, the power of your work with all of this. So I wanted to ask you all, what are your hopes for the Ohio Prison Arts Connections partnership with you and other recreation staff in DRC. Some of the hopes, if you look at OPAC as an institution, look at your colleagues across the state and DRC, do you have any hopes for that kind of partnership um, now or into the future? You know, I, I, I agree with what Chelsea said. I mean, we have some uh, excellent artists inside here. And I think what uh, OPEC can, can do with our partnership is continue to create a platform to where we can actually get that out there. I think that's important. I think every rec department has uh, programs that it is extremely proud of, it, it be it in journalism or be it in music or the visual arts or some have them all combined. But again, that platform with that partnership with OPEC is very important because that helps move the agenda forward. Yeah, great, thanks Eric. And Charles, the same to you, hopes for OPEC and the partnership in the future. So my hopes are that OPEC and ODRC can create a pipeline for the artist um, to get their work, not just out there, not just, um, but also to get them a seat at the table um, to be recognized as artists and to also bring, allow them the opportunity to grow as an artist, whether that's being trained, um, marketed. And then when they are released, they have that point of contact on the outside. They have a community that's welcoming to them to where they have somewhere to start because that's absolutely important um, in reentry. So I'm hoping they get that community, that relationship um, and that seat at the table. Yeah, that's great. And I can't keep, I can't wait to keep talking about those kinds of things. I think those are all brilliant um, hopes and aspirations and ideas that are um, tangible too. So that's exciting. Thank you. Uh, and Ms. Brady, same question goes to you. Hopes for OPEC in the future. Um, you know, from your perspective, where you are at today, 
its relationship with DRC and, and, and the community in general? Any hopes for you? My hopes um, are that we can continue to be a productive unit um, to offer the outlets uh, and opportunities for the offenders within the facilities and in the arts and to continue to be interactive um, with the arts community and to help um, develop a database or a website that I think that, you know, OPEC could help us to do that, um, to recruit artists to come into the facilities. Um, I know um, we just need to make it easier to connect with the arts community outside. And I know that when the uh, Greater Columbus Arts Council had their preview night, that was one of the biggest um, uh, uh, parts of me going out to talk with artists, to meet artists, to see you know what their craft or their art was, and then to um, um, book them for an event to come into the um, come into the facility. So I, I would just like to see that continue and to, just to know that, you know, we have, um, as our recreation administrators, we have always uh, had programs and, um, you know, at, uh, at all the facilities and uh, we strive to have a partnership with outside agencies to help us to enhance the programs that we already have. It's really great, Pam. Thank you so much. Well, folks, we are nearing the end of our conversation today. Um, it, it's been such a pleasure to get to spend it with you all. Hearing your perspective is, is so immensely gratifying and important, and your voice is so crucial to have here. So I know OPEC is very grateful that you could spend some time with us. You know, at the end of every Radio OPEC segment, we typically like to have what we've termed as a moment of reflection, essentially, it's a moment that we can all take a, take a pause, take a breath. It's an opportunity to enjoy some creative work that's been furnished or created by our guests uh, that we may all reflect on as we just take a moment to wrap up. So um, we're gonna have a couple of the ODRC staff members share some of that artwork with us right now. We'll go to a different screen. We'll have that artwork displayed. So uh, for now, everyone uh, take a moment, take a breath, and take a look at some of the more reflection we have to share with you today from our DRC staff. So this is the gymnasium and recreation department at Dayton Correctional Institution. This is our gym. This is where the magic happens. This is where a whole lot of our activities take place, our dance teams, um, our theater, drama, uh, all of it, art shows, everything usually happens within this space outside of our space that we have designated in community service. And so because the Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections encompasses a holistic approach to assist in the reduction of recidivism, the art program has been the center of the rec recreation departments in all the institutions for a very long time. So we take pride in our areas to allow the uh, residents to live here, the space that they need to recreate appropriately. And the art that I've actually decided to share with you is called The Wall, and it's a blueprint. And it is actually right here, and it stretches all the way down. So I'm going to walk with you and explain what each panel means. Each panel has a different artist. Um, and the wall itself consists of 14 scenes, which creates a blueprint telling the story of the incarcerated woman's journey through the justice system. So follow along with me, beginning from the left side all the way to the door, moving right toward the courtyard door. Um, it signifies her journey as each step takes her closer to reentering society. So if the um, offender was walking along this path that I'm taking you down, it actually would walk them from the heart of the institution toward the exit. The wall gives a visual of the internal battle a woman faces while incarcerated. So the blueprint itself serves two purposes. First, as a visual aid to help gain an understanding of what it means to actually be an incarcerated woman. And secondly, it's a true blueprint for the women residing here within DCI's walls. 
when given the opportunity and provided the tools that are available to them, they are able to heal, learn, grow, and prepare for productive reintegration back into society. And in turn, we all benefit from the reduction of violence and recidivism. So again, I invite you to walk with me along the panels as I explain my most favorite piece of art within the institution. So like I said, this scene is scene one and it's the arrest. So this is after the crime has been committed. The second panel is a waiting trial in the county jail. The third panel is a guilty conviction, sentenced to incarceration. The fourth is saying goodbye, the separation and loss of the children. The fifth is the arrival. This is when they actually start their state sentence and they arrive at the institution. The sixth is called a new reality, struggling, miss a family, the loneliness, like when it all starts to sit in when they're alone in their room. And you can see that she's holding a picture from her child. That's when the loneliness really starts to kick in. The next is sisterhood and survival, rebuilding through support groups. All the women have access to support groups to learn about themselves and to grow. So that's what this means, it's communal. That communal support. Eighth scene is religious services seeking forgiveness and guidance. The ninth scene is making plans with case managers and therapists, every, all of the services that are available here within the institution. This one's a heartbreaking one to me. This one is forgotten. Um, children that suffer through the pain and loss of memory. And you can see that the artist on this piece actually, I'll zoom in for you, the birthdays, happy sixth birthday, happy fifth birthday, happy seventh birthdays, like all that time that's lost with their mom. And you see that she's got her mom drawn out and she's cuddled up with her napping. The next piece is goal focused, learning, growing and rebuilding inside out. Sinclair actually has education within the walls here so they can get um, education while they're here. Um, something maybe they didn't have access to or the opportunity to attend on the outside. So that is available within these walls as well. Again, Sinclair, this is like graduation and this one's actually called graduation day. We have graduations within um, the institution and they're always like amazing to attend and watch. Um, this one is called release. This is leaving prison when they get to see their babies again on the other side of the gates. And then the last panel, the 14th panel, is actually called success. It's family re reunification, reduction, and recidivism. So this is after she's graduated, she's released, she's got reunified with her children. She's actually purchased a home and that's the end goal. Success. So the artists who were involved in making these panels are, um, Jamie Santini, Katie Wilson, Melissa Morgan, Avila Vila, Miss Garvin, Miss Embry, Miss Reno, and Miss China Arnold. So there's a lot of women involved, a lot of artists involved in creating these pieces. But like I said, if you walk the wall, the oversees the gym floor, you see all of the artwork displayed. It's one long continuous mural of support and it overlooks our gym floor. So again, that's my favorite piece and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks.
Hi, my name is Pam Brady, and I wanted to share a couple of pieces of art that I uh, endear that are endear to me. And um, I want to. You can see the two pieces in the background. Um, each are from two different facilities. So as I uh, worked at, um, I worked at um, this is this piece here is called I Two Shell Rise, and this is a um, a pencil drawing by one of the offenders that was at Pickaway. Um, and then the other piece is in the background here, and that is a watercolor abstract piece. And if you see it, it really looks like it is a storm with the at sea. And you could um, see the color that um, was brought out um, with the um, with the painting. And I wanted to uh, share a piece of art. Um, it is a it is a um, an Andy Warhol autograph um, that I um, I was in uh, college and it's my freshman year, and that was part of our um, this was part of our assignment was to go to the Pace Art Gallery, and Andy Warhol was the featured uh, artist. And it was almost like we were just going in circles, you know, following him all around the art gallery. And then I just stuck my notepad out and he signed it. And if you see it, you could see that it has a Campbell soup can um, at the top. And then you can see where it reads Andy Warhol. So this is like one of my most personal uh, prized possessions that I own. I've not had the opportunity to frame it, but I just wanted to share it with everyone. Um, so that you know, you know, he was a great artist in uh, the pop art um, era, and I have his autograph that I can share. Thank you, ODRC staff, for sharing that with us, and thank you for sharing uh, some of what you do, some of your own work, uh, and, and your own personal convictions of the power of the arts. So, and of course, a, a big extra special thanks goes to you for being here on as a guest on Radio OPAC today, where again, we're so grateful uh, that you're able to join us and we value everything you have to say and, and bring to the conversation. Of course, we're also very grateful for your continued support of the Ohio Prison Arts Connection and its mission. Uh, certainly your belief and involvement in it makes OPAC a stronger, more resilient organization that's poised to continue serving the needs of individuals and communities who are justice involved. So. Got to make sure I get that final thanks in there just for your, your own personal um, partnership in all of this. For folks listening on social media, we also want to thank you for joining us and spending some time with us today. If you haven't done so, please continue to follow the Ohio Prison Arts Connection on Facebook and on Instagram. You can also take a look at the OPEC website. That's www.ohioprisonartsconnection.org. You can follow the OPAC website for any updates and news on the arts and justice spaces, both in Ohio and around the country. And that's especially important to keep following OPAC because this is one of the last few radio OPAC uh, interviews that we're doing uh, structured like this. So we're going to have a little bit of a different uh, feel to radio OPAC going forward. So uh, we are excited to get to kind of close out this uh, this uh, segment, this radio OPAC era with our DRC friends uh, and we'll have some more things to share with our audience going into 2021 and beyond. So um, with that, everyone, my thanks again for joining us, Charlesy, Eric, and Pam. We're so grateful for you and the rest of the ODRC staff for your partnership and, and allowing us to be in conversation today. So grateful. Uh, and thanks again to all of our audience. Take good care to yourself and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye now. Oh, yeah.